Warning, the following contains explicit language and subject matter that may not be suitable for younger listeners, church folk, and people who enjoy kale smoothies. I have the best stocked survival shelter in northeastern Pennsylvania, but everything has a shelf life, so I must eat and then replace everything that's about to expire. It's nice not to have to plan my meals. You're eating eight-year-old tomatoes. They're still good for another week. You know, I think I might have some type of cheese in the back of my fridge you might like. I've got some cheese you might like, too, in between my toes. Hardy <laughs> <laughs> har har. All right, picture this. Snowy ash drizzles from the sky. A rabid pack of dogs surrounds you as the flame at the end of your stick dies out. There's only one hope left for you, the door to my shelter. You pound, you beg, Dwight, please let me in. But I ignore your cries and do not let you in. You want to know why? Because of the sign that says no pounding, no begging. No, because you laughed at me. Kevin will be eaten. Pam will be taken slave. Jim will be made a warlord's jester. Meredith will do OK. Be assured, this day will come. It's just a matter of time. Could be one month, could be two months. Three months. Could be. Four months. I see that happening, yes. Eight months. That's a realistic timeline. Eleven months. Perhaps. OK, wait, now really think hard about this one. One year. I could see that as a very real possibility. back to a pod amongst men i don't even like introduce myself who are you who am i steve b god damn right (laughs) well either way welcome back to a pod amongst men i'm your host steve b i'm here with returning guest tack pack jack what's up jack what's up thanks for coming back man happy to be here yeah i know there's a a few things that uh, we didn't get into last time i think it could be a little more there's so much you know we could do this for days we could I wouldn't mind, honestly. This is a uh, marathon. I'm really starting to enjoy doing this like every week. I don't get to go out to the bars all the time like I used to when I was a single man. You brought the bar here. Exactly. Hey, I got extra if we run out. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're good. Hang on. Let me uh, give me a favor. Pull the mic a little closer to you. Yeah. You want to stay like a fist like away. Yeah. Like this. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Now I hear you. Now you hear me. I'm here. All right. And we're back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tuning into WKKZ, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, no, all right. So seriously, though, what we want to talk about today is uh, something that I think there's a lot of people don't even give a second thought to, or not even a first thought to. Uh, everyday carry. Oof, if you go on Instagram, everybody's talking about it. It's hashtag oh. EDC, man. Hey, I mean, if you go for the hashtag, you're getting that target audience. Yeah. But I think most people don't even think about it. No, they don't. So EDC, everyday carry. Do you want to uh, give a little introduction as to what exactly that is in reference to well it's it's a, a big term in the firearm industry and they if they say like what's your edc they usually want to know what gun you're carrying what knife you're carrying and then guys some guys have like little other things they carry challenge coins or whatever but it's basically whatever you got on you every day you know when you leave the house you got your phone you got your wallet and usually it's a in states where you can carry a firearm mm-hmm. that you know a knife your keys whatever your bottle opener all now, good stuff. there's two things in there that I want to ask about. Uh, the first thing is the challenge coin. What's the deal? I, honestly, I, I've heard it. A lot of people refer to them, challenge coins. I'm not sure what the what's the purpose. What are they? I, I don't know. It started in the military. I don't know when or how long ago, uh, but it's been around for a while. And it's, you know, like if you make some kind of like specialized unit or if you're in like a small group, you know, like obviously in the military, there's thousands of different divisions and, mm-hmm. and groups. So they would just make like a customized coin and might have like their, if they have their own unit patch, it would have that. Or if they have a slogan, you know, they would customize it and then everybody in that unit would have it. And then, you know, you're out at the bar and you see another guy from whatever. So they call it challenge coins. You got to take yours out and show it to them. And if they don't have theirs on them, then they owe them a round of drinks. So they call it uh-huh. a challenge coin. Right. But then it started, you know, that now in law enforcement and, and all any, you know, not just in tactical world, but mm-hmm. people are making challenge coins as like fundraisers. So for the the police unity tour, which is actually just landed in DC uh, two days ago, um, so we we make them every year like a yearly fundraiser. So we sell like a 2019 challenge coin, and anybody can buy it. 
Um, but they're, they're mainly now for collector's items. Like, people still carry them on them, like, their own. Mm-hmm. But then you go to a guy's house, they'll have these huge displays with Yeah, I've seen guys with, the like, the case with yeah. all of them in there. Yeah, so I got a bunch at work. Like, if I go to um, different events, you know, like, I, I actually did a security detail for um, – when uh, Paul Ryan was Speaker of the House. Mm-hmm. So after I completed the detail with him, he presented me and my partner with a challenge coin. So now I have one of his. That's pretty so, cool. You know, and usually they're like rare, hard to find items. And then yeah, they're trade them unique. And, yeah. So it's pretty cool. Okay. It's like Pogs. Remember Pogs? So it's like that, but <laughs> How could adults. I forget? I actually went to a Pog <laughs> tournament. How'd you do? I lost in the second round. Yeah. Did you get a participation trophy? Or? I didn't get anything. No. I did buy a couple Slammers. Well, so challenge coins are basically slammers. Oh, pretty you know, cool. Solid metal. And- Did they? I because I had one. It was during the OJ Simpson trial, and when that was going on, and I had a picture of OJ, and they had like painted bars in front of him, <laughs> and the other side it says the juice is loose. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of well, I was you know in grade school, so that was good for me, right? Because I really understood what was going on. Yeah. All right, um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is the, with pocket knives. I know different states have different laws, but. I, I've never been able to find a straight answer on whether or not it's legal to carry the pocket knife or if there's like a size restriction or... Uh, it, well, it varies by state, but mm-hmm. generally you can carry it as a tool. Mm-hmm. So if you, you know, as long as you're not carrying with the sole purpose to attack someone in New Jersey. But is there some kind of like, like restriction on it? Like... I don't think so. Um, there, New Jersey lists specific types of knives. Okay. So if you're carrying like your basic folding pocket knife, then you're generally good. There's no size restriction on that. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, there's. Uh, I would have to pull up the law, but the, they used because it used to be like the, the yeah, they the, say, oh, if it fits inside the palm of your hand. No, I don't. I think that was just a rumor. All but, right. I figured because it just seems like like they're not really going to make a law based on the right. size of a random person's hand. Right. Uh, but there, I, I don't remember the knife or the website, but. Uh, I can I can give it to you so you can put it in the notes. But there oh, is a, there is a dope. there's a, a pretty good lo- website for knives and also for firearms, and mm-hmm. it, it breaks everything by down by state. You know what's legal, what's not legal, and uh, you know you just click on like the map and it shows you for that state. So if you're traveling, then you know like if you're driving from New Jersey to Florida, you know if you're in a certain state, yeah. you gotta hide it. But you can you can assume that if you're going from Jersey to Florida, the laws are gonna get a little more lax. Right. Yeah. As you go south, it gets a little more lax. I always had like I always got paranoid whenever I had it on me, because everyone I went on my first date with my wife, I had my pocket knife on me, and we were in the city, we were in New York City, yeah, and we decided randomly to go to the, the Empire State Building, so they have the whole security checkpoint there, yeah, and I, I got I was just about to get up to the metal detector, and I said, oh shit, and I'm like, oh, just so you know, I have this thing, you know, what do you want me to do? And they're like, all right, just put it in here, and it's like a whole process. They have to put it in like a secure bag, and they keep it behind somebody's desk. Some guy, I don't know, you know, I don't worry about that. I'm sorry. They're, they're sturdy. Breaking your mic. It's okay. They weren't that expensive anyway. <laughs> Once I get some sponsors, we'll make an upgrade. But, yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of guys that, that feel uh, like they, they, you know, they're taking a risk just carrying it with them. They might get in trouble, you know. No, generally. Yeah. I mean, you know, as long as, uh, you know, most knives are used as tools. And to be honest, mm-hmm. they're not very good for self-defense. I mean, you know, unless you yeah. really train knives and knife fighting and you train, like, drawing it out, especially if it's a folding knife, you know, get it open. In New Jersey, you can't have, like, an auto opener, you know, mm-hmm. so you got to manually open it. They have, like, the assisted ones, but, um, you know, they're not the best for self-defense. They're okay if well, you train with it. I mean, as someone who's carried a knife for many for years now, like, it really is a great tool to have. Yeah. Like, that, that's one of the things I think people... You kind of get the wrong idea, like like oh, why are you carrying a knife for? You think you're gonna get mugged? It's like no, it's if I'm gonna get mugged, this is probably not what I'm gonna use. Yeah, I'm probably more likely to just keep it in like closed inside my fist and yeah. you know punch well, I, somebody. I can't tell you how many times I'm at like a family party or I'm wherever, and they're like, hey Jack, can I borrow your knife? Yeah, oh, you know, all the like, time, all the time. Yeah, and people say, why do you have it? And then they need it, and like yeah. oh, now I see, now yeah. I get it. So it, they are good to carry, especially like I said, as a tool for you know you gotta. Cut a shoelace or whatever, mm-hmm. or a seatbelt in a car accident. You know? Yeah, it's, that's a good reason. May not be the best thing. They have the the special seatbelt cutters, but you know, yeah, who carries that? You need to cut something. You got the knife on you. Do you have a a preferred knife, like a style or a brand or anything? I mean, it depends on the purpose. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, just like yeah. for a random, like every day. Yeah, so just a general folding mm-hmm. knife. I mean, I don't. They, you can spend five hundred dollars on a knife, but. You know, if you're using it the way they're intended, then it's going to get beat up, and I don't want to be spending four hundred dollars on yeah. a knife that's going to 
you know, get all dirty and the blade's getting bent. So now mm. I'm constantly, you know, working on the blade trying to keep it straight. So, you know, you buy like a, a decent Gerber knife. Gerber makes really good knives. Mm. They're not expensive. Um, so, I mean, that's probably what I would recommend a Gerber um, or a Columbia River knife and tool. That's what I have. Yeah, they, they make nice. And they're, again, they're not expensive. So if, you know, worst case, you're going somewhere and, and they take it from you. Oh, well, they took my $50 knife, but I didn't lose my $500, you know, one of 20 knife you know so yeah. he mentioned gerber i actually have a gerber uh a kukri like a machete right. upstairs i got one too yeah i don't i just really there really wasn't a, any practical reason for it at the time but it, it seemed pretty cool and it fit really nice on my pack but uh yeah i got yeah. one of them from gerber i get i get a few things actually oh, mine's a sog i have a sog machete i have a sog tomahawk there you go <laughs> yeah we're gonna get into all the the, 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 tomahawk. the individual <laughs> weaponry uh later but uh so what do you carry every day? Just not as a, as a law enforcement officer, but as a civilian. Like, what do you think is a good baseline? Like, if it's, assume we're talking to somebody who has no idea what any of this is or why we carry anything or what we're even talking about. What would you recommend? Well, probably more than what you can carry on your person. So the first thing I would probably recommend is a good backpack, okay. especially as a parent. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have – actually, it's – my little cooler here. My my buddy owns this company. He makes backpacks too. Okay. But they're like, what's the name of the company? High Speed Daddy. High Speed Daddy. Give yeah. him sh- give him a shout out. High Speed Daddy. My my buddy Craig owns it. He's, he's a local guy. He's retired uh, from the army, um, but he makes like daddy uh, diaper bags. Okay. But they're like tactical backpacks. Um, so I use that, and it's great because I always have my, my kids are out of diapers now, mm-hmm. but I always have wipes with me because it has like up on the top front compartment. There's a, a nice spandex thing you can fit wipes in there. Um, any, any parent is gonna uh, gonna appreciate yeah, the value in that. There, you know, you can yeah. use wipes for w- many more things than just uh, changing a diaper. They're they're probably asking how many packs can I fit in there? Yeah, uh, I mean at the range, I use wipes. You know, like when I go to the range, I'm there for ten hours, so we eat at the yeah. range. So I'm cleaning my hands with baby wipes before I eat because I don't want to eat all that junk on mm-hmm. my hand. Um, but yeah, so I think a backpack, especially as a parent, um, you know, I always have, uh, like I said, wipes. I have a, my my Leatherman multi tool. Mm-hmm. I got a nice Leatherman. Uh, has pliers, you know, has like different uh, saws, files, whatever. And I'll probably never use all of them, but, you know, I, I use the pliers all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, I keep like a little thing, a sunblock. You know, you never, like, we just uh, a couple of days ago, we we're at the Branchburg Food Truck Festival, you know, and we got there. It was the sun was out, and we're like, oh, we don't have sunblock. Yep. You know, but then like, luckily the clouds came out. I mean, it wasn't that bad. You see my head. I probably should have had some myself. Yeah. Were you at the food drive No. I was just working on the house. No. Um, but like I said, so as a parent especially, having a good backpack, just having things that are always in there that um, you probably will need, maybe not definitely. Mm-hmm. If it's something that you need immediately, you carry your person. So mm-hmm. a firearm, your knife, your wallet, your phone, a good watch. You know, I don't, I don't rock the, uh, any of the smart watches yet, but I have a nice Sunto. Um, I, I have a smart watch. Like it's it's cool, but I feel like I'll be too distracted by it. And it's not even that. I just like I like the thing, but I can't find a practical use for it. Yeah. Like why? Well, I can't just take out my phone. You know what I mean? Because now it's one more thing I have to charge. Yep. It, so it's, I got, but I got a nice Santo Core. It's like a military grade watch, but it has like an altimeter. So if you go like scuba diving uh, or snorkeling, it has like a depth gauge. Mm-hmm. Um, but it actually gives like storm warnings. So if it like detect as like a barometer built in. So if there's like a storm rolling in, it actually gives you like an alert that oh, that's pretty rain. cool. So it's a good, you know, good watch to have. Um, but that's that's what I carry. I carry a firearm, a knife, obviously my keys. I carry two wallets because I have my badge and I keep my other wallet separate. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my phone. Everybody needs a phone. But then in my backpack, I have a big, like a brick sized backup battery, mm-hmm. like a charger. And I have a little one that I, I could put in my pocket and I keep a spare charging cable. Because your phone's always going to die. Yep, I got mine plugged in right there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then sunglasses. Because I got I have really sensitive eyes, so yeah. I always have my sunglasses on. Yeah, I, I uh, see, like, for everyday use, I don't really carry a backpack. But if, if me and the family were going somewhere, I usually bring one with me. I have one of those like anti-theft ones. Yeah. Like when we went on our honeymoon, we were in uh, Barcelona and Amsterdam, and... You know, you hear somebody say one thing about somebody getting robbed there, and you, I don't want to take a chance. Right. So they make the ones where the zippers are on the inside. You yep. can't get to it from the outside. And it's got all like the the extra pockets. It's got the, the special port for the the backup battery, or the battery pack. Yeah. So you could literally just plug your phone into the strap, and it's connected yep. to the inside. Yeah. 
and uh, it really wasn't that expensive. But it's just nice because you're walking through the city, you're going on, you know, an adventure with the family, whatever. You have all this stuff that you might need. You have tissues, the wipes. You have, you know, a pen. Even you know how many people carry a pen on them? Yeah. Like you don't need it. Obviously, you're not going to die without it. But these right. are all things that make life easier. So yeah. when you need them, you can just reach in, and it's all there. You know, yep. if you're on a on a trip somewhere, just shit. If you buy something, you don't want to carry it all day. You have a backpack. It's right. easy. It's always nice to have, you know, tools, s- storage, anything. Yep. Uh, but for me personally, I I like the backpack idea. Yeah. What's the name of that company again? Your High point? Speed Daddy. High Speed Daddy. Go yeah. look them up. Are yeah, they on in- Instagram? On, on oh, they yeah. have a website. Oh, yeah. yeah, he uh, he's on all social media platforms. I think he even sells everything right on Amazon. Well, I know everybody gets all like the you know like the the name brand like tack bag like the, yeah, the Molly Mason. strap bags like Condor and you know yeah well so if you're looking for a high end bag which isn't too crazy but uh, Max Edition makes really nice bags that's my my patrol bag at work is a Max Edition mm-hmm. I paid like two hundred dollars for it but it's like a like a messenger bag but on steroids it's big um, but I've had it for eleven years mm-hmm. and it looks brand new still I paid two hundred dollars for it but. Hey. I got my money. My money's worth having. Yeah, so usually when you spend a lot of money, it's because you're getting a better product. Yeah. Usually. Oh, yeah. So it's it's one of those things, if you're going to be using it every day, it's always nice to to maybe splurge a little bit and get to you know yeah. oh, enjoy yeah. it a bit yeah. more. I mean, I use this bag every day at work. It sits in my car. It gets beat up. It goes in and out. You know, I'm throwing it around. Yeah, last thing you need is that thing falling apart on you. No, nah, this thing is rock solid. So we're kind of getting into a uh, a topic which... For me, it was it was interesting. It was a part of my life for a while. The idea of prepping, you know, like you're they, everybody knows the show Doomsday, Doomsday Preppers. Doomsday Preppers. Yeah, and all those crazy assholes that are right. on there. But uh, I think a lot of people don't actually give thought to where this idea comes from. And I know for me personally, what really opened my eyes was when Superstorm Sandy hit. Yep. And you know, I ha- I was lucky where I lived at the time. We never lost power, but I looked around and everybody around me was without power for like a week. Yep. You know, you see in some places were even longer. Some places were over two weeks in New Jersey. Yeah, oh yeah. And you just hear people and it's like, what's your plan? Like, do you have, are you ready for this at all? Like, what are you going to do? If you're depending on your neighbor to let you tap off their generators just so you could, you know, plug in your refrigerator for an hour. Yep. Like, that's not a good plan. Like, no. what, you have a family, you have kids. Like, what are you going to do? You guys are stuck here without power. The, the gas station, you can't even get gas. Nope. Right. Like, what's the plan here, man? Well, the the, uh, the saying is, fail and prepare is planning to fail, you know? Um, I'm certainly not a, a doomsday prepper, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, I have, I don't know, I think I have, like, 10 gas cans. So I, I have a generator, mm-hmm. but it's not, like, a whole house, you know? Like, it doesn't automatically kick on. Um, but I, I live out in the farmland, kind of. My house runs on a well, so I, if I don't have power, I have no water. Yeah. So you know, my my generator really is there to run my my well pump, and then I have a huge chest freezer, mm-hmm. so I always keep a ton of frozen food, and then my refrigerator. Um, but really, I keep. Uh, I think I have six gallon six gallons of water in the bottom of my freezer. So number one, if I do lose power. And that thing, you know, I, let's say worst case scenario, I'm out of gas, I got no power. I, that thing, the, those six gallons of water are going to keep that freezer and all the food in it cold for another week at least. Hmm. You know, it's it's heavily insulated. If you don't open it, you're not really losing any That's uh, true. Any of the, the coldness in there. So I keep just frozen gallons of water in the bottom of it to keep all the food cold in case I do lose power in there. And then the frost eventually at night, you, you have clean drinking water. But now, so... Like one of the things I want to zero in on is what ex- like because one of the common questions people ask is like oh you're a prepper like what do you think is going to happen? So I want to talk about what it is that people think is going to happen and what are they what they are preparing for? Yeah. You know, for me, like I said, it was something that I saw with my own eyes. I saw people getting in fights and you know I, on the news some guy got stabbed over waiting in line for a gas station. Well, I responded you know? to those calls exactly. <laughs> I saw it. I was the one guarding the gas stations. Yeah, but you you almost see like. The cracks open up and society, like oh, yeah. you know, begin to break down. It was it was, it was crazy. That's what that's thinking so, like those shows like The Walking Dead. Like this is what that's about, aside yeah. from the zombies. But you know, everything goes black. Yeah, everything oh, yeah. goes down. Yeah. What are Big you gonna time. do? And for me, uh, Irene was actually worse than Sandy. 
because of all the trees that came down. So I had a Hur- Hurricane Irene was the year before Superstorm Sandy. Yeah. If you're unfamiliar with either of those, it was what 2012? Yeah, 2012 was Around Sandy. That. 11 was Irene. Yeah. So I had a tree coming down to my house, um, and I had behind my house, I have uh, 10 acres of, of uh, wooded area, and it just sounded like a, a war going off in my backyard with these trees coming down, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and thank God that, number one, I have a chainsaw, and I was smart enough to buy a brand new thing of bar oil uh, <laughs> before the storm, conveniently. Um, and then my buddy owns a tree company so he was able to come over quickly and get the tree off my house so i could finish cutting it up because i wasn't about to try to kill myself trying to get this tree off my house yeah it's not something you really want to do alone no no. it was a big tree yeah um but it didn't do any damage to my house so i got lucky really lucky the huge base you know slowed it down and it fell through a bunch of other trees so luckily my parents had one come down on their roof not major damage but enough to give everybody a good scare yeah um but then like you know again like i remember uh one of the roads going up to the to Martinsville and Warren, like up the mountain, mm-hmm. like thirty trees came down. Oh, yeah. You know, and now we're getting fire calls, and you can't even get fire trucks because I'm crawling. I got my headlamp on, which is another thing. I keep my backpack a headlamp. Always um, good to have. Yeah, hands free. Yep. Um, better than using your iPhone. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but you know, me and a bunch of firefighters are crawling over, under, and around these massive trees to get to somebody's house. You know, and thank God there wasn't a real fire because they mm-hmm. would have been dragging. Hundreds of feet of fire hose. Yeah, um, not a good look. But so, the, in in my experience, uh, Irene was worse than Sandy. You know, Sandy, the flooding down here was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. But uh, with the trees coming down by my house, that was that was the uh, the worst. That we I had. saw. Like I remember the day after Sandy hit, driving down Route 22 East towards like Greenbrook, like the Plainfield, those areas. Yeah. Everything was closed. Yep. All the gas stations were closed. They're out of gas. Most of the most of the streets you couldn't get down because it was trees. So many trees down. Yeah. I didn't even attempt to go up the hill into like Martinsville, Warren. Yeah, I get there. Yeah, it was it was useless. Yeah. I basically wasted, you know, forty five minutes trying to go all the way down there for nothing. Right. Because it was there was nowhere to go. And then everybody's fighting to get uh, gas cans at Home Depot. Yep. You know, they're, they're waiting out back for the truck to deliver them. They're trying to steal them off the truck. Yep, and then you have, you know, everybody's trying to buy a generator. Next thing you know, you have the guys price gouging. and Oh, I got a you know, fresh shipment of, you know, Gener- a Generax. Yep. It's not, it's not a good situation. The whole yeah. idea is we don't want to have to go through that craziness. And now that we've seen what could happen, you at least want to be prepared. Yeah. I think the trick is to, because I know for me personally, like when I, when I started kind of making my bug out bag and... You know, figuring out all the stuff I would have in there. It's kind of fun in a weird, twisted way. It's like all the the different gear and tools and stuff I can get in there. Like make it look cool and you have all this different – Yeah. All this bullshit, basically. Yep. It, it almost becomes a hobby. And I think some people get carried away. Oh, big time. I mean, that, they have an entire show about it yep. as, we, as we've as we seen. Like, I mean, I'm not advocating going out and buying a bunker in Montana – but I am definitely telling everybody listening, you should at least have some kind of plan in case of an emergency. Oh, yeah. It's that simple. I'm not saying you need to have, you know, six months worth of MREs under your bed. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, at least have some semblance of a plan yeah. for if something were to happen. Because as we know, this kind of shit happens all the time. And if you're someone who believes climate change is a real thing, it's likely to keep happening. Yeah. So and you have to know your the, the area you live in. You know, like what what is a legit threat to your mm-hmm. area? You know, like we're on the East Coast, we have to worry about hurricanes. You know, blizzards, but Texas and Nebraska, you know, they have to worry about a whole different thing with yeah. tornadoes and absolutely and droughts. You know, like these are completely separate scenarios. So the way we would prepare uh, is a little different than the way they would prepare. Mm-hmm. You know, so we don't need to worry about a hurricane ripping our house and having you know a tornado shelter. You know, because you might yeah. drown in your tornado shelter when your basement floods. Yeah, that's true. Always, it's nice to know uh, whether or not you're in a flood zone. Yeah, we're pretty close to one right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just right down the street in Manville, it was all those houses were you know half underwater. Yeah, same thing down in uh, Bradley Gardens. You know, back way back in the day, by uh, on the other side of Old York Road, there was a whole little development back there. When Irene hit, I was living in Bradley Gardens, but luckily I I had a couple trees in the back. I lucked out on that one, yeah. and then. The year after, I had moved into Raritan, so when Sandy hit, I was in an apartment building, and 
we were like one of two buildings in the entire town that didn't like go out with power. My my uh, cable went out for like thirty minutes, yeah. and that was it. So for the whole week, my my apartment was like a refugee shelter. You yeah. could hear the sweet sounds of Jack cracking open a new beer. <laughs> Tastes like a touch of your lips. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it was crazy. It was a crazy time because I had um, for work. I I was working in Jersey City at the time, and you know Jersey City and Hoboken were really fucked. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, half of Hoboken was underwater. Yep. So uh, I didn't have any work. They, my job site was closed, and I just basically had a free week off of work. So people were just coming in and out, use the shower, charge their laptops, try to do some work. It was nuts, man. Yeah. And uh, I got a little, I got a little nervous too, like just seeing how some people were just losing it. You know, just the the decency goes right out the window when when you feel whether or not you're you know right about this but when you feel like your survival is at stake yeah you know it's not a time to play nice anymore yeah so you know i definitely advocate for people having some kind of preparedness yeah and and going back to what you said about like a bug out bag um the one thing that i I would recommend doing and i don't think too many people do is having like a, a a vehicle like a jump bag or a go bag in your car um you know and and uh like in the winter, I keep a blanket in my car, one for each kid, mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, I probably could get a tow truck or, but, you know, what if it's during some of the, one of these blizzards and, yeah. you know, you're stranded on the side road, you, you run off the road and, and you're waiting two hours for a tow truck, you know, like I keep blankets in my car in case I got to wrap my kids up. Yeah. You know, I, I have a backpack with a couple items, you know, with a, I have like a little shovel, you know, so if, if something does happen, I'm, I'm going to try to stay by my car because it's, mm-hmm. it's shelter, you know, but. I'm not going to walk home my six and three year old in a blizzard, you know, but if I have to walk home because my car ran off the road and, you know, I'm not getting a tow truck for four hours, I can walk home, you know, it's Mm -hmm. probably going to be two, three miles, which I can do, you know, that's a good, like practical scenario too. It's it's not something that can happen to anybody. You're not gonna make a TV show about it, Yeah, but it's, it is realistic. I mean, if I'm driving home now, you know, it's a little bit rainy, but it's not anything crazy. Mm -hmm. If I crash or if something happens, I don't have to walk home, you know? A tow truck will be there in 20 minutes. They can yeah. drive me home. No no harm, no foul. But, you know, one of these storms, you know, like during during the hurricanes, th- these police departments are so over overworked with. Yeah, there's only so like, many cops. You, know, you, got, you got fights up and down Route 22. You got, you know, people trying to break into convenience stores to, you know, get gas for whatever. Um, you know, if you if you run off the road, you're, you're waiting out on that list for help. You know, and these tow trucks are, you know, they have like. Two three drivers, mm-hmm. you know, you're you're not getting towed out of there for a while. Yeah, it takes a triple eight an hour to get you right now. You know, that's not an emergency, so you might have to walk home and, and leave your car on the side of the road. You know, so that's something that I think you actually should be a little bit of a prepper for. You know, you don't need a thirty pound backpack with a bunch of crazy weapons and a yeah. rifle in it. You know, like you need. You definitely don't need that. No, maybe a Cliff Bar and a bottle of water and you know, a pair of sneakers. Do you think that? When you had kids, that kind of changed your perspective on the whole thing, or at least maybe made you feel like a, you know, like, well, I mean, obviously it made you feel like you had something to protect, but uh, I don't know. For me, it was, it became more real now that I have a family. Yeah. It's like, well, it's not just me. Like, I'm not just, you know, out there slinging dick, you know, waving a machete around like, you know, no yeah. one's come. If I'm a one guy, no one's, no one's coming to attack me. But it was just, I just feel like, almost like a, I don't want to say paranoia, but I just feel very protective. I have a family, I have a wife, kid, you know, I have my in-laws now to protect, yeah. or at least to, to consider. Right. It's, uh, it almost makes the whole thing more real. And yeah. I at least understand, I'm not saying it's okay for some people to just go down this rabbit hole of all this prepping and, you know, all the craziness, but I at least understand the thought process. Yeah. You know, it's great. I don't want to. You know, like I said, I'm not giving a pass to these these guys that are teaching their kid how to put on a gas mask and how to you know slaughter a goat, right? Just for the sake of prepping. But yeah, I mean, you got people trying to build Faraday house, uh, boxes like around their entire house because yeah. they think an EMP is going to go off and they're worried about you know all the electronics being damaged. What is the EMP thing? Like I, I've like oh man, my uh, I knew somebody who was like he swore he was signed on to some kind of like FEMA email list. And he was getting alerts whenever there was like some kind of threat. Like this is one of the type of guys who was all about like he believed Jade Helm. Right. Remember that? Yeah, like, yeah. come on, bro, come on. Like, I it's don't know. 
and like and every time like they it's almost they're like conspiracy theorists basically yeah and every time a new one comes up and then goes by and never happens it's like oh well you know there's another one coming it's like right. come on that was man. a test yeah I want to see how you react <laughs> <laughs> I, it just it got that's when I kind of stopped because I started seeing some people just you know there's no I don't want to say cynicism but it's like, aren't you a little skeptical at any of this yeah. like don't you ask any questions like, where is this information coming from? And they're blowing a ton of money on the stuff they're buying. Oh, yeah. To, pre- to prep for all this. Tons of money. Building bunkers, you know, digging holes in their backyard, dropping shipping crates and stuff, or bomb shelters. Somebody's laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah. But uh, bug out bags are a good one because that's, I think, one of the most practical, like, sensible things and pretty basic yeah like what do you think what are some things you think you should have in a bug up bag like for me i would always say first aid gear uh some kind of fire starter yep. obviously you have a knife um uh, maybe some way to uh some kind of like some way to cook food whether it's like the little sterno cubes that they make yeah. something like that up. yeah like a yeah. blanket maybe a sleeping bag or at least like a tarp i always like to keep with it yeah because that way it's easy to make some kind of shelter yeah you know well, so I, I recently, um, you know, once my son got a little bit older, I got into camping. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've discovered that if you are into, like, backpacking and camping, then guess what? That's your oh yeah that's your bug out bag right there. I got, and, and I have a big, you know, it's like an 80 ounce or whatever um, camping bag or a hiking backpack. I got my tent in it. I got a nice camping chair. Mm-hmm. I got my jet boil. <laughs> I got a water purifier. You know, like I have the, the filtration system. Which one do you have? Uh, I forget the name. Of the I had the the Life Straw. Yeah, no, I have. Uh, I got. Um, it's like a pass through, so it has like a bag you fill up, and then it runs, and then it goes. Oh, okay. Clean. So it was like a game. legit one. Yeah, I mean it's small, but it it's it's pretty good, I guess. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's another important one, like water water filtration. Yeah. Power goes out, and there's no running water at some point. Yep. What are you gonna do? Or it gets contaminated. Yep. You, know, you gotta you get like the boil warnings. One of the things I had was one of those. Uh, it's like a little radio slash flashlight slash crank charger. Yep. So it looks like a tiny little AM FM radio. It's got a crank on the side so you could charge it yourself. It's got a little rechargeable battery in there. And it's got a solar panel on the top so you let it sit out. You know, yep. if you're going to charge your phone, it's a nice uh, alternative. It's got a flashlight on it, and all yep. these little things. And they're not that expensive. And that like picks up like the weather radio station probably? Yeah, it's, an, it's just AM FM radio. Yeah. Well, some of them are like dialed into like specifically these weather channels. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it wasn't that fancy. Yeah. But, like, what other kind of stuff do you keep? Well, uh, let me think. In my, in my, oh, I got a, so I got a, a big knife, mm-hmm. like a, like a Bowie knife kind of thing. I keep a cable um, with mine. Yeah. And then I have a machete, which I don't really keep in my bag, <laughs> but I have it. I mean, I could throw it in there. Um, I, I have it in the closet with all that stuff. I just, it's more for fun. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I like I've used mine out in my back because it gets pretty overgrown. So I'll go through with with my machete and, and yeah, like I've used it hiking and stuff like yeah. that. But I mean, that's really the only semi practical usage for yeah. it. Yeah. But I mean, the, the what I keep in my car, like I said, is something that if I need to get home, you know, I need to walk like four miles. But mm-hmm. if I'm home, I'm not going. I'm not leaving my house. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not. I'm not one of these guys that's gonna jump in my car and drive out to, you know, western Pennsylvania to some bunker or I have a log cabin, you know, like mm. I'm staying home. Yeah. If the power goes out, I can still manage in my house. You know, I have I'm lucky enough I have gas stove. So if the power goes out I can still light my stove and cook on it. I got my grill which runs on natural gas. Mm-hmm. So I can still use my grill. You know, it has to get really bad for the gas to stop working. Yeah, it's true. Um but you know and then I have a I got a fire pit and a burn barrel in my backyard. So I mean I could I got plenty of wood in my backyard. I can keep the fire going for days. That's all important stuff, too, is just, I mean, I guess you would consider them survival skills. Yeah. But you should know how to make a fire in yep. case. Like, just shit. If you're going camping with the family, like, what are you going to do? You're going to go out there, just, you know, oh, I have a lighter because I can't, Yeah. you know, make and a flint. Not, you can't just put a lighter to a piece of wood. And it's, it's not gonna, that easy. No. And here's a little uh, hack for camping or whatever. Take dryer lint. Mm-hmm. And throw it in like a toilet paper, the roll. And there's your fire starter. We used to do. We take a, an empty Altoids uh, tin and just fill it up with the lint. Yeah. They say if you if you put Vaseline in there with it, that makes it even yeah, better. It'll burn longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We did that a couple of years ago. Me, uh, you know, George, yeah. 
me, George, Drew, and Drew's friend Chris, we went uh, camping in Round Valley. So we decided taking my son pretty soon. Yeah, we decided we were going to take the hike. It's like I don't know, maybe like three and a half miles from where the parking area is, and we brought all our gear with us, like everything we were taking—the tents, sleeping bags. We had it in our backpacks. And uh, first of all, like I think we underestimated how far it actually was. We figured it was going to be like, yeah, not that bad. It's not a flat three miles. No, not at all. We were, you know, humping all that gear out there. Yeah, it got that. rough. And then you get out there and you realize, like, all right, well, now we have all this time to kill. What are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> so we basically just had a little knife throwing contest and, you know, cooked some burgers. And we were wishing we brought beer with us. And, yeah, it was a state park and I want to bring alcohol. Oh, well, there you go. Plus, and then we, we, we were thinking about it, too. We wouldn't want to uh, carry it either. No. Well, you can boat out to the campsites there. Yeah, that was that was the plan for next time. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my kid and a couple other people. Can you rent canoe like boats? No, out there? you can't. Oh. Although I I think there might be a a guy nearby that might rent them, but the 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 state you know at Round Valley the state parks they don't they don't rent it out there. Spruce Run does, but not Round Valley. Okay. But either way, camping camping I, is a great way to prepare and learn. You know, mm-hmm. but, but you you can't go to like some car camping. You know, like you gotta find. Yeah, New Jersey it's hard. New Jersey it's hard to find like outdoor like primitive campsites. Mm-hmm. But Round Valley is, is probably the the best and closest you're gonna get to. You know, it's it got really bad and you just have to go set up a tent in the woods. Like yep. Round Valley is probably your best bet. And but that is by far the best way just to learn like basic survival skills without like you know being a Boy Scout or yeah. where they take in and teach you this stuff. What are some other like survival skills that you think are good aside from like being able to start a Start a fire. Well, something that I'm trying to learn, like uh, dressing an animal. Everybody's like, oh, you know, the, the shit hit the fan, you know, like the food's gone. We got to go hunt a deer. First of all, uh, hunting a deer is not easy. No. And then number two, if you do manage to kill a deer or a squirrel or whatever, you know, now you got to dress it and butcher it, which is a, an art in itself. You know, yeah. Like, I, I have a lot of friends who are big time hunters and they don't do it. They bring it to a butcher. They, you know, they're not doing that. They might do some field dressing, but. So that's probably a good skill. That's Nobody that thinks I'm, about that. That's something I'm trying to work on next. You know, like I, I didn't, I didn't never learn any of this stuff. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just learning it now, or you know, past couple of years because this stuff I want to pass on to my kid. Like mm-hmm. my, my father passed away when I was a kid, so I didn't really have, uh, and he he didn't know this stuff anyway, so he wouldn't be able to teach me. But, <laughs> um, you know, so this is stuff I want to pass on to my son and my daughter, um, but you know, I got to learn it first. So I'm luckily I have friends who are into this stuff, so I'm always like. Call him up, hey, can you show me how to do this? Or, hey, can we go and can you help me out just mm-hmm. so I can – and I'm, like, bugging. I'm, like, hey, show me what you just did. Do it again. I didn't I didn't see what you did, you know. <laughs> Bring another deer over here. Let me start over. <laughs> go kill that deer over there. I... Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, so that, stuff... that dog is old. Let's use him. Come on. Right. No, no, they won't miss yeah. him. It's okay. Uh, and then another another really good skill, I think we might have covered this in the last podcast, but is just basic first aid. You know, yeah. like, Oh, that's a huge one. You know, like, number one, people panic. Like, uh, I mean – at work, I get I go to squad calls all the time for you know relatively minor injuries, but mm-hmm. just people don't know how to handle it. That you know they're scared. You know they think for every injury you have to go to the hospital, which you don't. You know I mean, like recently my kid just face planted in the driveway. His face was just a bloody mess. As kids often yeah. do. And you know, I have in my high speed daddy backpack I have a trauma kit and what I call a boo boo kit. <laughs> so that's another thing I carry in my backpack, and and that's something you should keep in your car. Um, you know, and, and everybody thinks of like trauma kits are for you know gunshot, but it's not the case. Um, but I brought him in the house. I cleaned his face up, which he didn't enjoy that part. <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, he was done bleeding before he was done crying. You yeah, know? and it was fine. Um, but you know, there's been uh, my my wife stepped on a fishing hook at the beach one day. You know, Ooh. had my Leatherman in my backpack, cut it off and got it right out. You know, no problem. And she had to wear a tetanus shot, but I but don't it, do tetanus shots. But you know, though, it's like simple things like that that people don't think about. Yeah. Like, that could happen to anybody. Yep. Anyone. Yeah. And it just so happens, you know, all it takes is one little tool, and look at that. You just, you save the day. Yeah. So that's that's a big thing, having a, so it, and there's a big difference, and I, I keep them separate. So my, my boo-boo kit is basically like alcohol wipes, band-aids, you know, maybe uh, some tape mm-hmm. to, uh, just medical tape to keep the band-aids on, um... You know, maybe some gauze if it's a bigger wound, whatever. But that's you know for your scrapes and your minor cuts, whatever. Um, I keep like little strips and like super glue. Like my, mm-hmm. my wife like cut her thumb open pretty good on one of my knives when she was doing the dishes, freaking out, thinking she needs stitches. I'm like, you don't need stitches. We're gonna glue it shut. 
You'll be fine. What kind of do you, do you use? They, I know they make the special first aid glue for that. Yeah. But do you, you don't use like regular no, super glue. No, I super glue. And that's, that's okay? It's probably, I mean, there might be better options, but I'm pretty sure that the medical <laughs> stuff is basically just super glue with a different label. I remember for a while I had that. It was like, it's the, the first aid stuff, but it's uh, it was called liquid skin. Yep. And I tell you what, like it worked. God damn, that shit burned yeah. as soon as you put well, it on the super wound. Glue, so it's probably the same. Oh man, like that, it hurt worse than the actual cut. Yeah, by a lot. Yeah, um, but then for your your trauma kit, that's for like life or death. You know, you're bleeding out, and if you're not using this in you know two to four minutes, then you're probably gonna die. Yeah, I mean, I just to educate yourself on basic first aid because I know most people like the extent of their knowledge is okay. Put pressure on the wound. What? Well, that's, that's all they know. That's a legit. Well, I mean, it's a start, but, you know, sometimes you need a little more than that. So, I mean, take a, you know, especially your parent, you know, like the last thing you want to see is your kid get hurt and Mm -hmm. you're sitting there basically helpless because you don't know what to do and you're panicking, you're calling 911 and they're not going to be there for who knows how long. They're all volunteers around here. Mm -hmm. They're all responding from home. You know, the police might be there pretty quick, but, um, you know, that's, that's, especially the parent, like that's something I think that everyone should learn, and they're not expensive. My wife got CPR certified. You know, I'm obviously CPR certified. Uh, I've been to a bunch of medical classes, and I, you know, do what I can to teach her. Mm-hmm. I don't know it, when the stress hits. I don't know if she'd be able to do it. But the, going to le- legit training classes where you're running through practical scenarios and actually mm-hmm. kind of going through dry runs and practicing this stuff might be more beneficial. Oh, it certainly helps. It certainly yeah. doesn't hurt. So that's, I mean, you know, and let's say you go camping at Round Valley. You know, you're six miles away from, uh, you know, civilization, basically. You know, out yeah. on some trail. And you fall and, you know, you get a rock through your hand or whatever. Yep. You know, you, you have to know how to stop the bleeding and, and survive until, you know, legit help gets there. Yeah, I mean, just think about it. If you live somewhere out, you know, away from a main city or a main town even. Yeah. If you live out somewhere in the woods, it takes time. Yeah, like look you, out in Alaska. The, the police have to fly to some people. Jesus Christ. You know? I mean, you're on your own. Yeah, that's so, that's imagine, a choice right there. It is. But imagine now, you know, like, let's let's go back to Sandy or Irene, you know, like, emergency services are, are running at bare minimums. They're all, you know, tied up on stuff. And, you know, a tree falls through your windshield or, you know, your car. You know, mm-hmm. now your roof is collapsing and you're bleeding out. You know, like, you might have to try to give some self-aid, you know, or die. Yeah. So, and again, that's something that could happen to anyone. Yeah. So, like, my main point though is just for anyone listening, some of this stuff is just common sense. Yep. You know, because we're not talking about crazy zombie apocalypse scenarios or, you know, like, there are people who pray for that to happen, though. Yeah. Well, some people watch too many movies. And I might be one of those people that watches too many movies, but that's not a scenario I'm hoping for. Yeah. But there's, uh, there's a really funny. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee commercial where all the guys are hanging out and they're like wives running. They're like, somebody's breaking into our house. And they all like high five each other. Yeah. And they start like drawing on dry race board of like who's going where. And they open this big safe and they start throwing their guns and they're like getting all amped up. <laughs> That's what how people are with like the zombie apocalypse. Yep. They're like, please just bite him so I can shoot him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's you know, we're, I'm going to come back to that. But my, I just wanted to say like, just uh, from a practical standpoint, if you have a family, even if you don't have a family, uh, just in general, you live you live alone, you live with anyone, you need to be prepared for anything. Not uh, obviously that's a bit of a broad yeah, statement. Let me real, rephrase realistic it. Realistic scenarios. You need to be prepared in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Like have some kind of plan. Just having a bug out bag, a simple ba- little backpack in the back of your car. I know how to use what's what are in what's in exactly. The backpack. Don't it's, go on Amazon and buy. Everything on whatever some list. Yeah, then, don't make the pre buy the pre prepared yeah. ones. Never open it, so you have no idea what's in it. You don't know how to use it. They're yep. all in, in vacuum sealed packages. Yeah, yeah. But you should at least have some kind of form of a plan, oh, yeah. just in case, because the last thing you want to be is one of these other people running around, running around trying to figure out, you know, how they can get inside the CVS because they don't have any food left at their house. Right. You know, so and just anything like that. You know, just don't go crazy with it. No. But realistic. That that was a that was a real thing too. Like, especially I know a lot of guys. You know, if you're into shooting, a lot of times you have you have a lot of weapons, you have a lot of gear, you have a lot of cool toys that you're only ever going to use in one situation. There's some guys is like, oh man, is that, 
You know, not that I, not that I wish, God forbid, but I wish somebody would try to break into my house. You know, I've literally heard that said. I have too. Yeah, but I mean, listen, I understand some of the stuff is cool. It's like fun to think about. It's not. It's not in real life. Like somebody breaks in your house, you know, you shoot them, even if it's justified. You know, you're gonna be yeah dealing with lawsuits and possible. You know, you you still could be criminally charged, even if it. You know, it goes to the grand jury, and then they don't charge you, but they have to charge you, you know, and let, let it go to the grand jury. So now you're like, oh, shit, I, I think it was a good shoot, but they still might indict me, you know, and then you're getting sued by everybody. And they say, you know, your kid you grows up to that. resent you. Right, you don't want you know, that. He's banging guys in a train station. <laughs> you, you don't need this. You don't need these problems no, in your life, no. okay? Uh, but about some of these more, uh, how can I say, enthusiastic preppers have you like have you seen any examples of people that take it too far i mean i i think i know at least one maybe two people who bought one of these like you know three month food supply bucket things Mm -hmm. um but other than that i mean i think i try to keep some friends who are reasonable people and not that but um I know there's a place up in, I think, like on Route 10. It's like a survival. Yeah, yeah. It's called Get Out Safe. Yeah. Uh, You know, so I I, I used to always see that, like, advertised on my Facebook. It would always show up, but... It's a small little place. Yeah. I've been in there once or twice. Like, they have some stuff in there. It's But they're more of, like, the practical, like... It's not the crazy shit that you would see, like, you know... You know, people buying, you know, assault rifles and, you know, bunker supplies. It's literally, like, practical stuff, like food... Yeah. Water purification, it's like shelters. Like store. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's not weird or out there. Yeah, it's just but I guess it's a tiny place on Route Ten. I yeah. think that's it's still Parsippany, maybe. Yeah, something that's up in there, Whippany, one but, of that. Yeah, around there. But anyway, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's all right. Uh, so I don't know anybody who has a bunker in their backyard, as far yeah. as I know. But a lot of them, a lot of these guys keep stuff secret. They don't that's want true. to know. So I may. Yeah, we, I mean, we might. Know. We all might know someone. If I don't know, then they're doing a good job of yeah. keeping a secret. See, I just get my problem is that I find people that, you know, you, you you do get enthusiastic about the kind of thing like, oh, I have this, I'm I'm ready for anything, you know, and it's like you have all this stuff and that same scenario, it's like you wish something would happen so you could just use all this stuff yeah. that you have sitting around your house, and then some people like when something it becomes cool, like oh, I have you know, like a. A hidden shelf in in my living room where I have, you know, I have a Glock hidden in there yeah. just in case there's some kind of home intruder. Right. It's like okay, but you don't really want that to happen, right? You know, like that's this is for worst case scenario. <laughs> you don't answer. You're like right. They're like, mm. and like so you know they're leaving <laughs> right. like you know, you know ten dollar bills in like yeah. a trail to their front door. But I just feel like some people, it's easy to get really wrapped up in it because. As crazy as it sounds, it can be kind of fun when you're just thinking about all this, you know. I mean, it's 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 really fucked up to say, but it's 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 kind of a hobby to a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and I I I was there. I I saw it. I saw how people can go down that that slippery slope. Yeah. Because next thing you know, it's like I said with the FEMA website. Oh, well, and it's not probably not even a real FEMA website because I don't think that they actually send out stuff like that. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. So, it just leads you down this hole. and That's when you start getting into the conspiracy theories, the Jade Helm stuff, and, you know, everybody, oh, they're coming for your guns, so you better stock up now. Right, bury them. Yeah, that doesn't happen, because every time they say that, number one, they don't come for the guns. Number two, the gun manufacturers end up making a shitload of money, and then, you know, it's just, they repeat the cycle. Right. So, I don't know. Like, I, I want to give out, like... A caution to people that are listening like listen be ready just be mindful also right and like i said earlier prepare for legitimate yes uh things that you know scenarios hurricanes blizzards you know you don't have to worry about uh the zombie apocalypse <laughs> i hope i hope we hope yeah but I mean, yeah just, just some in case I have, some of the stuff was I like i have some things in my closet which well let's just say if, if there is a zombie apocalypse this is probably going to be one of the most prepared houses around. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, the tomahawk I have, it was a gift. It was a gift. And no, excuse me, no real practical reason to have it other than it's badass. But 
I, at one point, I got it as a gift. I'm like, well, I guess I better learn how to use this damn thing. Right. So, I mean, I trained a little with it. You know, and next, you know, you know, I played Assassin's Creed. I'm like, all right, well, he uses one, so let me just do what he did. Not really. No. Yeah, not really, but... You know, some of the stuff, it becomes like like grown-up toys yeah. to some people. Like, and I, I worry, that, especially with guns, that some people don't realize that that's how they're looking at it. Yeah. Because, I mean, if we're being honest, you know, how many, how many firearms does one person need? You know, you live in a house, it's you, your wife, and two kids, say. Like, do you really need six ARs and ten handguns? Well, it depends on, you know, like, people... Do use ARs for hunting, so mm-hmm. you may have one or two set up for. I thought they were illegal for hunting. No, they're legal. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, it depends. You're not, you're not going to be hunting deer with a, a five five six round, but you could be using a seven six two, you know, an A ten, AR ten. But they use them for hot for um, wild boar, like out in Texas, you can go hunting from helicopters. Yeah, I guess it all depends on where you are. Too, yeah, the region. Um, in New Jersey, there's no rifle hunting. Okay, that's all right. In no. New Jersey. That yeah. make, that makes sense. That's where I heard that then. Yeah. Um but uh you know, Pennsylvania you can use mm-hmm. rifles. Uh, most states, just not New Jersey. Smooth bore, shotgun, bow and arrow. Uh I think that's it. But I don't know, like my, my problem is that I think for small game you could hunt with a twenty two rifle in New Jersey. I think. What what's a common rifle like for rabbit. hunting? Oh, no, for uh, go, go. oh, there's oh my god, there's a thirty out six, three oh eight. I mean, there's a bunch of different calibers. It depends on you're hunting, mm-hmm. you know, the size. But for most deer, I, I would assume a seven six two, a three a three oh eight round would would do the job. Yeah, I just I I worry that some people just take it too far, you know, because I'm I I think you know if you're you're a father, your husband, you you're a homeowner, like I think you you should a hundred percent know how to use a firearm and be able to protect yourself and your property that's not i don't think that's unreasonable and as long as you're a responsible owner and you're trained in that kind of thing i think that that's a great thing and it's something that's like you know obviously enshrined in our constitution but i think that some people just get carried away yes you know a lot of people tend to do with a lot of different things yeah and i mean there are some people with just a ton of money to blow and if they have the money to buy a bunch of guns then good for them but you know i'd rather buy Less guns and spend more on ammo and training. Mm-hmm. I think we covered that in the last podcast, so I won't go crazy with it. But um, yeah, I mean, you, you can only shoot one gun at a time, really. Yeah. Maybe carry one as a backup, you know. Unless you're in a John Woo movie. Right. But typically, you know, maybe you'd have a long gun and then the, uh, your secondary would be a handgun, you know. So you're only shooting one at a time, but you might transition to a, a secondary. But uh, you, you should be proficient with both of them, you know. So. Usually that's training, and you need ammo for training. So mm-hmm. instead of buying six ARs, buy one and maybe two ARs, and then a bunch of ammo, and then spend some money on a class. And now you can defend your family. Yeah, and, I think the class. you're not going to worry about stray rounds, you mm-hmm. know, shooting through your wall and hitting your neighbor, you know. The, the actual training, I think, is, like, paramount in yeah. the whole thing. Like, you yeah. need to be trained. And they actually have, like, um, I forget the name of the, what the classes are, but, you know, like... They're firearm classes, but you, like, go on hikes through the mountains, you know, and they set up, like, long-range targets. So it's Mm kind of like a little bit of a backpacking trip with some, like, long-range precision marksmanship included. Yeah, it's like the scouts for grown-ups. Right, exactly. But uh, I don't know know if we talked about this last time or not, but, uh, like, I think if you're going to buy a firearm, like, there should be some kind of required training. Did Did we touch on this? Maybe I don't remember. Right. Um, you, know, I, I don't think that that's too crazy. If you need a license to drive a car, why not to, to you know, to have a firearm? Yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're not saying you can't have it. Just you know, to at least know what you're what you're yeah. getting into. That's all. Just because you know, I mean, a firearm really doesn't have any other use aside from inflicting the most bodily harm possible. I mean, they they have for they have sporting, you know, like yeah, they have but, three gun tournaments. But I mean, it's all shooting. Yeah, but it's like it's, it's a gun has one purpose to fire a bullet out of it. Exactly. Yeah. So I I think it's I don't know, I think it's pretty reasonable. I think most people can agree on that. I'm not you know I'm not too crazy, but like I, like getting back into the the prepper thing, the whole slippery slope. 
Guns like, are always included in proper conversations. So yeah, no, listen, really, we're not all, off target. That's all part of it. Yeah. But, I, yeah, I just – my concern is for people that get too caught up in it and it leads people down these, you know, kind of like dangerous paths. Yeah. Where like, you know, you go down these YouTube rabbit holes and it just gets – it gets kind of scary because some people, you know, they don't question some of the stuff that they see and read. And it just – they end up believing like, yeah. cr- crazy stuff. Even, you know, by any standard, it's just – I just worry that some people – don't know when enough is enough. Like, do you think that that's a common thing, or do you think that that's? I just don't think it's common. Few... I mean, I I think that there are some uh, special people out there who, you know, they probably don't have a lot of friends, and mm-hmm. you know, I mean, apparently they have some money to blow because the stuff isn't cheap. But yeah. uh, I don't know where. I mean, I've seen. I was watching Doomsday Preppers. That show was entertaining, <laughs> you know. But um, I don't know. You know, I don't think it's very common. I think that there are people who are kind of doing what we're saying and they have some things, you know, just in case, but, you know, they don't revolve their life around thinking that some kind of crazy scenario is going to happen any day now and, you know, they need to be ready to head to the backwoods of wherever and Yeah, I mean, hide. but I just, you know, you hear, remember a couple of years ago they had like the, the militias, they took over the, was it the state park office or something? Like that was over uh, that land dispute with the yeah that was there was a the Bundy Ranch related. yeah they were all related but there was with the uh, the Bureau of Land Management was mm-hmm. trying to take over their property or they they said that it was their pro- I forget what the exact I feel like that's not like a New Jersey East Coast problem really no that that was a bunch of like farmers and yeah you know they I don't know if I would call them anti government but they were probably the the next closest thing to it you know um, but I mean. Depending on how you look at it, they had some legi- they, they're slightly legitimate arguments, you mm-hmm. know, and it may have not been handled the best way by the government. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, then you can similar things happen with Waco and a lot of these other things. I mean, it's you get people who you know they yeah. have their beliefs and they don't want to budge. Yeah, and there's documentaries about it on that, all over Netflix, yeah. like Ruby Ridge and yep. all that stuff. And then they're all they're all kind of related, you know. Mm-hmm. They're all. Um, it's just pretty much anti-government. Yeah, yeah, it just seems like it's like a like a path to some kind of radicalization for some people who already, you know, maybe on the the fringes of sanity, so to speak. Yeah. But uh, and it, it 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 can go from one legitimate, you know, scenario where somebody had a legitimate claim against whatever, and then other people see it and run with it in a totally different direction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But eh, either way, just use your heads, guys. Use your heads. Yeah. Just be reasonable. <laughs> one of the all right, this is we're gonna go way the hell off the topic. One of the things you, you talked about was you just mentioned like some guys who maybe you know alone, lonely, have money to blow. Have you heard about this term incels? I have a little bit. Yeah. This is something that I like. I've been thinking about it, and I, I'm not gonna target those. The people who identify as that. My thing is, do you think that if a guy is alone for too long or lonely or you know, can't find a woman, do you think that at some point that that starts to mess with a guy's brain? Like just as a, as two guys talking, like you know, like the, you know, some guys it may not be blessed with good looks, you know, maybe have a harder time finding girls. Yeah, I think at some point there's some guys. If you've been alone too long, or you just you keep striking out, you can't get out of your own way. Whatever the problem is, I think there's some guys and they start to get you know maybe resentful. Some guys start to resent women because you know they have they haven't had good luck. I think that that a lot of times that, that it's almost like that isolation really starts to mess with with people with guys' heads. Yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah, I mean, you know if. Uh... The, the prom queen probably isn't going to want to always date like the chubby, overweight, you know, not so attractive guy. You mm-hmm. know? So maybe you should uh, kind of, you know, have a certain standard and you may not want to try to reach that high. You know, maybe the prom yeah. queen isn't going to be interested in you, but just because she's not interested, it doesn't mean you have to shoot up the school yeah. or, you know, kill a bunch of people because she turned you down, you know. And I think that's kind of what happens here. Like they, these guys are thinking that, uh, you know, they get turned down by a girl who is a little bit out of their league, you know, and they give up, and next thing you know, they hate everyone, you know? And no, they, 100%. Like, yeah, it's not a 
It's not a hard thing to imagine because we all know somebody who just not had very good luck yeah. in the dating realm. Like I said, not everybody's a supermodel. Not everybody no. looks like Brad Pitt. No. So I think, or I don't know. I, mean, I definitely think that kind of the society recognizing that these trends, that's why you see a lot of people start to gravitate towards guys like Jordan Peterson. You know what I mean? Who are kind of, t- yeah. or even like Jocko Willink, even. You guys are teaching like self reliance, self ownership, you know, get your shit together. I think I think we should leave Jocko for a separate podcast because I, I could go all day. Here. <laughs> but you yeah. know what I mean, like just the, those ideas, like yeah, I how mean, to be a, a you know a real man, so to speak. But like, take responsibility for yourself and your own life. If things aren't going the way you want, well, what are you doing that could possibly be the cause of that? You know, you you're gonna know more about this this topic than me. I'm I can I just you know how to talk out of my ass. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, so, you know, Jocko's whole philosophy is discipline equals freedom, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, if, if you're not a disciplined person, you're not working hard at a goal, if you're not working hard, you know, if, if you're trying to lose weight, you know, maybe, maybe you're a little bit overweight and guilty you think you think, <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, maybe you, you think like, you know, girls don't like me cause I'm a little overweight. Well, if you think that's a problem in your life what are you doing to try to improve that? Mm -hmm. You know, so are you, you know, eating junk food all day? Are you, you know, are you going to the gym? Are you, what are you doing to improve your life? You know, and, uh, he, he kind of says like that covers all aspects of your life. You know, like you want to buy, you know, you want to retire and and live, you know, a, uh, a comfortable life after retirement. And do you want to retire early, you know, or do you want to work till you're 70? Mm -hmm. You know, well, you have to be disciplined. So you, maybe you can't be, splurging on trips and buying expensive cars and and you know maybe that's a sacrifice you make now but the payoff is you can be financially independent and mm-hmm. retired at you know 50 instead of 80 the, the, you know the discipline to have that delayed gratification yes and are you you know putting a little bit of money away are you doing whatever you know and it does take discipline you know mm-hmm. some people they see that fancy new car that just came out and they're like oh, I can afford that you know um maybe you can yeah. but are you going to be able to retire at 50? Because yep. you're blowing all your money on that car, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of his, a lot of Jocko's stuff, really. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on board with pretty much everything that he uh, he, he preaches. I, I had a, uh, uh, my, Mike. Sass. Well, yeah, Sass. I should have just said that. But either way, Shout we were Sass. talking about uh, David Goggins. Yeah. And, uh, like, I think a lot of that stuff... I'm, well, I think it, I mean it's all great. Like obviously, there's a lot of people who really need something, or at least somebody giving them like a basic blueprint on how to get their act together. Yeah. Do you ever? I don't know. I I I feel like. Do you think that a lot of the stuff with Jocko? Do you think the guy ever takes like gives himself a little break? It's, I mean, it seems like he's almost not taking enjoyment in his life. Do you ever get that vibe, or is that just something I'm reading wrong? Uh, no. I mean, he he's addressed that a bunch of times, and and. You know, in in his mind, I mean, it actually makes him like, I don't want to say unhappy, but like uncomfortable to to not get a workout. And you know, mm-hmm. like if he if he misses a workout, and some of his workouts, like you see, he posts like every every morning he's up between it could vary three a.m. four thirty a.m. He's he's usually up by four thirty, mm-hmm. um, and then he'll post like uh, a picture of his workout when he's done. And it might just sometimes be like a band doing mobility work, you know. Mm-hmm. But he's up. Every morning doing something, you know, and that's what makes him feel good. He gets enjoyment out of that, and he actually, like, is unhappy. You know, he's like, ah, I didn't get my workout in today. You know, he feels, like, unfulfilled, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I mean, the guy is a, a monster in jujitsu and all that. I mean, he's a he's a pretty happy guy. He posts, you know, he posts some funny videos once in a while. He'll, like, April Fool's Day, he, mm-hmm. he did a good one. Uh, he got on, he was, he was going on about, you know, how... No, there's no joking around, you know. Today's not a, a joke day, and then he starts laughing. He's like, "I got you," you know. So it was a, it was a joke, but yeah. Um, no, nah, I mean, he seems like a pretty happy guy. I've met the guy; he's he's an awesome dude. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, good father has a bunch of kids, and uh, he writes good kids books. You know, my my son is a big fan of his. He has, he does a kids podcast. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if uh, you know if that's what he's doing and it's working for him, then. You know, I don't, I don't see why it's a problem. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I don't think that's a problem. I think that not everybody is is uh, well, so, wired so he, the same way. Is no, my, and, and yeah. he'll say that. So, I mean, his whole thing is like, look, this is – in order for me to do what I have to do, then I got to get up early and get this workout in because I got – I'm a busy guy. I got a bunch of stuff going on. So, this is when I have to do it. I got to get up early. Um, but if that doesn't work for you, then don't do it. Like, if you, if you work till midnight or 1 a.m., I don't expect you to get up at 4 a.m. to work out. You know, like, it's not healthy. Mm-hmm. He's like, look, I get up at 4 a.m., but I go to bed at between 9 and 10. So I'm still getting a good amount of sleep. And I'm getting up and I'm, you know, I'm still getting the same amount of sleep as you are. You're just going to bed, you know, four hours later than me. Mm-hmm. You know, so he, he doesn't say, like, you have to do what I do to be successful. You know, if you have to do whatever you need to do. So, like, my interpretation of the whole, like, sleeping thing that he does is uh, go to bed as early as you can, mm-hmm. you know, and then wake up early enough to do something, you know. So, if it, like, for me, I usually start work at 7 a.m. So, I get up between 4.30 and 5 so I can get a workout in because then after work, I either go to jujitsu, and but I got time for my kids now. Mm-hmm. So, if I don't work out before work, then... That means either I'm not getting a workout in or that means I'm working out after work and I don't get to do jujitsu or I don't get to see my kids or I got to work out. They go to bed. So now I don't get to spend time with my wife. So I do it in the morning, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm in a similar boat, but I also my hour switch. So I two weeks out of the month, I go in at 3 p.m. and I work till 1 a.m. So I'm not getting up at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Yeah. I work till, you know, so when I work. My afternoon shifts. I'm on a whole different schedule. Yeah, I was never able to do the morning workouts because I, I, I start work at seven as well, but I have to drive, drive. an hour to get yeah. there. So I'd be waking up at three, and you know, it's not a good look. No, I'd much rather just do it right after work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my I think uh, I know with with Goggins particularly, like he's a guy who's very open about like he's had a lot of you know struggle in his life, you know, oh, a lot yeah. of personal demons. And yeah, a lot of that, daddy issues. yeah, a lot of that discipline and a lot of that, like the hard work and the working out, like that's almost like a way for him to channel all the, the negative emotions and negative yeah. energy in him into something constructive, Yeah, which is something I've always been a huge advocate of. Like take all the, every bad feeling, every ounce of hate and sadness you have in you, use that at the gym, on the treadmill, whatever you're doing, yep. channel it and put it to, put it to work. Don't and, let it and, don't let it poison you, you know? That dude some days he's working out like four or five hours, six hours, doing these runs. And I, I listened to one of his podcasts and they were like, you know, what's the deal? Are you married? He's like, Yeah, I got a girl, we're probably gonna get married. He, and he was like they were like, Well, are you gonna uh you know, like change your lifestyle? He's, calm like, down? he's like, No. She this is me. If she wants to marry me, this is what she's getting. Uh, just because we're gonna get married doesn't mean I'm gonna, you know, work out two hours a day instead of four hours a day. This is me. I'm like Good for you, man. Yeah, good luck, man. <laughs> Let me know how that works out. It's going to be a very special woman yeah. when he finds one. God bless you. But, uh, yeah, I think that's definitely the hardest thing. I know for me personally, having a family, I started, you know, you have to make compromises. Yep. And you know, sometimes, I know for me, I, I can't not work, obviously. I got to yeah. keep the lights on here. But, you know, working out, going there, spending an hour and a half at the gym, you know, four nights a week. It's just not really in the cards. Yeah. You know, I, I, want, I want to come home. I want to see my wife. I want, to, I want to play with my son, even though he wears me the fuck out, dude. That's a workout. I mean, not not physically, mentally. Yeah. Because it never stops. Yeah. All that energy, I, it, it makes me tired just to look at him. Like, and I, my dad used to say that to me when I was a kid, and now I'm like, oh, I get it. Now yeah. I, that makes sense now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can relate. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a constant struggle, man. Well, I don't if you really want to do it, you got to find a way. That's true. You know? there is, is people say, oh, I don't have time. Like, well, no. if you really want to do it, you're going to make time. Yeah. No, get yourself a kettlebell. You could, mm-hmm. you know, you could 15 minutes, you can get a good workout. In. Yeah. Even especially at work, you have you have breaks, you know, take 10, 20 push minutes. Ups. Do some push-ups, do yeah. some air squats, anything. That's that, that's what it goes back to what you're saying. If you really want to do it, you'll do it, you know? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Unfortunately, some people have to hit that that rock bottom before they really yeah. get back on track. Oh, yeah. Some people. Some people. Hopefully you, you catch it before you hit rock bottom. You yeah. Know, well, they're opening up that new Lifetime Fitness over there by the mall. I'm going to start yeah. going to that. It's, it's, uh, they're getting close. They said uh, like, like midsummer. Yeah. But 
It'd be nice to get back into a gym instead of doing aerobics all the time. Yeah, my you wife. Can do jujitsu. <sighs> I know. I think the whole point is that my wife doesn't know too many people up here, so the fact that I go with her to the to these workout, we go to Orange Theory. Yeah. So the fact that I go with her, it makes everything so much better because at least she's not alone. So I I was like I canceled my regular gym membership to do that with her, and you know it's it's great. It's a great workout. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the same. No. You know it's not the same. At least for for a guy. You're not getting the same kind of nah, workout. You need, that, you need that bar on your back. You need something, yeah. I yeah. need to be hitting a heavy bag, something. Yep. So, all right. Well, I think we got some good stuff in, man. I hope so. I, yeah, I, I definitely think so. <laughs> I feel I feel like this one went better than the first one, definitely. And that first one had a, had a pretty good response from listeners. So, hopefully they like this hopefully one, too. Hopefully you're, you're, you don't lose any listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hopefully. <laughs> I haven't gotten any hateful messages yet, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, you'll probably get some with this. Nah. All the preppers are going to come out. Nah, let them. I'm, uh, yeah. We'll see what happens. I'm going to do an episode about construction workers. That's oh, gonna, boy. Yeah. I'm going to have like <laughs> some like coworkers of mine. We're just going to sit down and like tell like, crazy job site stories. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what kind of response we get on that one. Because I might have a few choice things to say about some <laughs> carpenters. <laughs> There'll be a disclaimer on that one. Yeah. Do not listen if you uh, are a pussy. <laughs> Make it real simple. All right, Jack, thanks for coming, man. Thanks for coming back. Returning guest, yeah. man. Number two. Yeah, number two. Hold on. This is, this is not number two. This is quality stuff. You get it? And it's a dad joke right there. Yeah. All right, well, there that back. goes. I'll be back for more. Yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good laugh I got there. <laughs> All right. As usual, you guys know where to reach us, a pot amongst men at gmail.com. With any questions, complaints, or suggestions, uh, we're on Twitter, Instagram, at a pot amongst men. Jack at Tack Pack Jack on Instagram. That's right. T A C P A C K J A C K. Go follow him. Show him some love. Thank him for coming on the show. He's always got interesting stuff to say. And uh, I think maybe we could, do, I think we could do another one at some point. I think so. There's always going to be shit to talk about. Yeah, man. There's well, always something to talk about. Again, thank you for coming by. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Oh. And happy beer. My son's not so happy. It's kind of late, but that's okay. Yeah, well, I'm going to get you home to the family. My son's probably waiting for me right now, too. Yeah. So, all right. We'll Daddy see everybody. Duty. What's that? Daddy duty. Big time. Big time. It's a second. It's a full-time job on its own. Sure is. All right, people. We'll see you next week. Peace.